In this podcast, we're going to talk about ionic naming. All right, first some steps on how you name an ionic compound. Uh, you want to write the name of the first element. Then you're going to write the name of the second. Change the ending to IDE. And then if it's a polyatomic, we're going to leave it as is because they have special names. And then if it's a multivalent element, which means it's in the middle or the skip, we're going to use Roman numerals. Okay. All right, so a couple examples. What is the name for the compound formed between sulfur and iron? Okay, well, first off, let's go ahead and write the formula just so we can review that a little bit. So we got sulfur, he's got a 2 minus charge. And then we got iron, and he's got a 2 plus charge. Okay, iron needs to go first because he's the positive one. And then sulfur will come second because they have the same charge, it would cancel. And then we just end up with the formula FES. Okay, all right, as for the naming, we have iron, okay, it's in the middle, which means it needs a Roman numeral. And it told us already in this problem that it was two. So we're gonna put Roman numeral two, so iron two. And then the ending is sulfur, and we're gonna change the er to IDE, so we're going to sulfide. So iron to sulfide. Okay? All right. The name for the compound formed between aluminum and carbonate. Well, remember that aluminum is AL and it's a 3 plus. Carbonate is polyatomic, CO3, 2 minus, and then we swap and drop just to remind ourselves of some formula stuff. We get Al2CO3, and then that needs to go in parentheses, and then there are three of them, okay? All right, and we would name this aluminum, and then aluminum is not in the middle or the skip, so we don't need a Roman numeral. And then CO3, that's a polyatomic, so we just name it as is, so aluminum carbonate. Okay? All right, last set of examples. All right, we have, what is the name for NH4SCN? Okay, well, this looks kind of crazy at first. If you look at it, we have to identify what you have. NH4 is a positive polyatomic called ammonium. Okay, and then SCN is another polyatomic, thiocyanate. Okay, so it just gets named as is. Okay, so that one had two polyatomics in it. Okay, so ammonium thiocyanate. All right, how about this one? Uh, the three should be little, right? He should have been on the bottom. That's just a little typo in my thing. All right, we have SN. SN is 10. All right, and 10 is in the skip column, so we know that he's going to need some sort of Roman numeral. So I'm going to go ahead and put some parentheses to remind myself. Let's go ahead and name the ending though. We got CO3. CO3 is carbonate. So we're going to write carbonate. All right, now we have to determine the charge on 10. Okay, so we have to go backwards. All right, well, there's no parentheses around the C CO3. So that means that we should think it's a 1. Okay, because there's nothing out here. But let's go ahead and double check our charges. CO3 carbonate has a 2 minus charge. But there's not a 2 down here. So if there's not a 2 down here, that means it had to have canceled. So that tells us that SN's charge had to be 2 plus. They canceled, and then you end up with SNCO3. Okay, so our charge on 10 is 2. Okay, all right, and last one. What's the name for NAI? Well, NA is sodium. Sodium is in the 1 plus column, so he's not in the middle or the skip, so we don't need a Roman numeral. And then I is iodine, and we're going to change the ending to IDE, so iodide. Okay, so sodium iodide. All right, and that's all there is to uh, covalent naming.